YA was pretty crazy back then. I, rem I remember yes. the stories. Yeah. Um, what was that like? Uh, first time hitting the reception in YA? We were told ahead of time from, you know, from uh, from homies that's been in there. Mm -hmm. And he, hey, you got to do this, got to do that. Don't let nobody take anything from you. Yeah. Uh, even if you lose, it doesn't matter. You know, that's not counter. Just don't let nobody take anything. From you. Mm -hmm. you know, and I took that too hard. So when I was going through Los Padrinos and uh, even when I got to to fire camp, uh, I, it was, I'm the wrong person, you know, that yeah. you want to cross. Yeah. Because I don't, whatever extreme that we need to go to is going to go there. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to do what I need to do to survive because, you know, going through there, I remember the first time walking in there, I was like, uh, you're nervous. Um, you're scared because you don't know. It's just like us facing death. We don't know what death is like, mm -hmm. you know, so it's that mentality, like it's the don't know. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, we're willing to do whatever it takes, <laughs> and um, and I survived through those places. Like, you know, that's because I didn't I didn't allow anything, not even a simple little thing. Because mm -hmm. I remember when I was in the county jail. Uh, this guy came and took trash out of my out of my room. And I mm -hmm. stepped out. I say, you know, that's a that's disrespectful of you. Oh, it's just trash. I'll put that stuff back. I don't want you to take anything out of here without my permission. Right. You know, but I ain't gotta live that life. Right. You know, I I I walked away from that life. That life is man, you you really gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, you know? yeah. As a youngster growing up in, 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 in you know with abuse and everything you you start living in that whole like where you're protecting yourself all the time and how you mentioned you grew up in a household with abuse i did as well and a lot of my usos that i spoke with i think a lot of people that go to jail actually had that same issue you know and we're stuck in that whole survival mode um what was uh what was it and what did it take for you to really finally get out of that survival mode after going through everything you've been through you know the streets cya prison everything how did you get out of that survival mode that pride mode you're talking about like i said uh, before i got out of calipatry mm -hmm. you know i had i had truthfully told myself man manu you can't come back here man this ain't the life for you you know, we weren't designed to be in places like this. Not yeah. you, you know. And then another thing is, I told myself, Mommy, you just got to do the right thing. Do the right thing, and you ain't got to worry about the cops looking for you. You ain't got to worry about somebody else crossing you or coming after you. You ain't got to worry about all that. Just do the right thing, and you'll be good. So... With that, I've had a lot of tests. And one of the things that, you know, I was working on at the time when I first got out, you got to have foundation. Uh, foundation to me will, will give you uh, stability in decision making. When you decide to do something, you got you to gotta check the boxes. Is this going to benefit just you or your family? Right. Mm. Right. And I'll give you a good example. I bought a stick shift truck, right? And I I went to work. So I used the, the other car and I told my wife she can use the truck. And I found out, you know, she knew the basic of the truck, but she wasn't comfortable in driving. And so therefore the truck sat all day. And I said to myself, why in the world? Because I was a truck driver. Why in the world would I want to buy a truck and it, it, it didn't benefit my family. Mm -hmm. So I was happy when we got rid of it. And uh, that's the point I want to make. You know, I was I was telling myself as I was uh, building the foundation to, you know, stand firm in, because without a foundation to stand on, man, you're going to be wavering in your, in your decision. So yeah. 
And I decided that, you know what, if I'm going to stay out, do the right thing. And, um, and a lot of it, you, you get tested, you know, you get tested on, on what you're trying to do, you know, to better yourself and protect your family as well as them from you. <laughs> yep. So one time I went to the gas station and, and I was pulling up, you know, how you pull up to back in. I pulled up and this other car, these two guys was in there, pulled up and took the pump. And I was going to church at that time. And that's what I'm talking about, that pride, man. <laughs> I pulled up, got out, and walked up to the guy and started going off. And the other guy came out and said, I don't care if there's four of you guys. You know, I was so mad. But when I happened to turn, I was so angry at the time. And I, as I'm talking to them, my daughter was in the car. She was, I think she was three years old at the time. And as I turned, I... I caught a, a glimpse of her through the window and she's like this and it stopped me in my track mm. it stopped me in my track and said you can't raise her from here you know you remember wow. you picked her up when she was born and you told her that you were going to be there for all, all her tomorrows you can't do it doing this stuff Wow. so I, I looked at them as mad as I was, I just turned around, hopped in the car, and drove away. And you know, you get so angry, tears come down, and you know, you're hurt. You wanted to do something, but in order to get over this thing, get a, you know, put a leash on this pride. And trust me, man, a lot of us that come from the island, we have that self pride, man. That, you know, that it's dangerous if, he, if, if it's let out the wrong way. Mm -hmm. But if it's allowed to take control. And um, the other time I was, you know, I was working, I was working for a trucking company and uh, I was offloading a trailer. And then I came to a, a, a pallet of computer chips and computer had just came out that year. So each box, there was 200 boxes and each box held um, 200 brains per box. So me and this one guy we were counting how many is in there because we didn't have paperwork for it. Mm -hmm. Right. So this guy told me, hey, I can have somebody meet us and we can drop this, drop this off and me and you will go half on it. Right. And at the same time, I, you know, in my head, I said, man, I'm, I'm supposed to be a Christian, mm -hmm. but yet, you know, I'm I'm being tempted here. And then I told him, oh, all right, let's do that. So uh, I put down, it was an empty container. I put some uh, empty pallets up it, up in it. So on the way back, you know, I'm, I'm fighting this decision. I shouldn't even say fighting. I was, I was trying to convince myself, can't do this, man. You're going against, you know, what you wanted to do, mm -hmm. which is do the right thing. So you can sleep better at night and you can, uh, you ain't got to worry about the cops coming after you. Um, so I, I went back and I made my decision before I got to that point of meeting, you know, and I just drove right by, took it in, made a note, hey, brought the pallet out and I left a note on there. This, this was unaccounted for and come to find out the, the company that shipped it didn't know who they shipped it with, but they were looking for it. Hmm. Um, and shortly after that, I ended up, you know, with the greatest job that, you know, uh, a guy like me can have. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and, and I realized that not at that moment, but I've, I've always, you know, uh, knew inside of me that, you know, honesty go a long way. Uh, we get tempted. You know, there's temptation. Yes, there's temptation. You know, decision, that's where, you know, when I say foundation, you, you know, you got to be firm with what you're going to do because if you're not willing to suffer the consequences, then don't make that decision. Yeah. 
And it's like you said, you know, um, <laughs> seeing your daughter and realizing, hey, I can't I can't raise her uh, from inside the joint. You know, I can't do that. And uh, and it makes me also realize as well that sometimes it, it's not us that we're willing to change for. It's something else like a family member, our children or something that really just pushes us and says, hey, you know what? I want to change for them. You know, if I can't do it for myself, I want to do it for them, you know, and uh, that's basically what I had to do myself. And I, I really understand that, you know, with what you did. And you're absolutely right. Making the right decisions. Uh, it, it really just opens new doors for you. And, you know, the only door you're going to open with the negative decisions is that <laughs> iron gate. <laughs> yeah. I think forgiveness uh, mm -hmm. plays a big role because it, it's a it's a beginning of of change. Because I I truly believe that when we don't learn to forgive, we will never get the closure that we need to move on. We mm. can't close things, you know. And uh, I forgave my parents. I forgave the ones that abused us or me. I forgave, you know, along the way. And it, and it opened up doors that made me a better person, made me uh, decide when I make decisions on things, you know, right away, who does this benefit, you or your family or everybody? Mm -hmm. And that's the and that's the kind of decision I like to make. If if it doesn't benefit my whole family, then I will say no. And I say that um, forgiveness, you gotta have foundation, you know, because uh, when I got out, I didn't have no guidance in staying out. All I knew is that if I did the right the right thing, uh, I won't have to worry about the cops coming after me. I won't have to worry about anybody being after me. I won't have to worry about you know somebody coming to my house when I'm not there. If you know the innocent one, I ain't gotta worry about all that. If yeah. I just do the right thing, and so I apply it everywhere I go. Somebody cuts me off. Yeah, I'm going to be mad, you know, but it gets easier all the time. You know, when you keep working it, keep working it, you keep, you know, you keep going down this route. And as you know, when somebody cuts you off, uh, he's in a hurry. He's late. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm heading home. I'm heading to the people that I love. Yeah. Man, that's powerful, man. Especially the forgiveness part, holding that in, in you where you're angry about things that happened to you as a child or, you know, just your upbringing. It really affects you in your adult life and how you interact with other people. Uh, forgiveness is very powerful. And that's something that's really hard for a lot of people to do, especially when you feel you've been wronged, you know. Yes. But um, looking at the bigger picture, like you said, you know, holding on to, is that benefiting me at all? And it's not benefiting anybody I run into and how I interact with people. So you wanted to speak about your little bro. Um, what was that like, you know, being in, in, in prison in the same yard with your little bro and then having to leave him in there when you, you finally got out? Um, I felt like I failed when I was younger. Right. And, uh, I can use so many excuses of why I failed. Um, but the only thing that I can say that I can accept, you know, what went on is I was young at the time and I didn't even know myself. But I didn't know I was setting an example for the younger ones looking up, you know. I might have been the guy that he's been looking up to doing all the wrong things and he ended up doing the wrong thing. And then I got to see it with my own eyes. You know, this is this is the product of, of the, the modeling that you did at home. And this is the results right here. Now, I don't want my brother to be in places, especially, you know, in penitentiary. Because when we go through it, we have to watch ourselves, you know, watch what we do, protect ourselves. And just imagine your younger brother, you know, you're growing up with them. You remember when you were young and just him going through this process by himself, mm -hmm. you know, and you're hoping at the same time you can go through with them. But, you know, it is what it is. And 
And one of the things that when I saw him, I, I say I failed as a brother, as an older brother, I failed. And then um, he ended up serving more time that I think he's almost triple what I did mm. at this point. And, you know, it goes back to that decision that we make at that, at that moment. You know, I mean, I, I honestly feel bad that, uh, you know, that he ended up in there. And I say I'm the person to blame, you know, for setting that example. For the, you know, I mean, we don't communicate in words, but, but action speaks louder because, hey, if he sees me do it, it must be okay. You know, and, and uh, that's the part I have to look at him and I say, I'm sorry, bro. But there's no words of saying. There's no words that can, you know, describe, you know, the the pain that, that I'm going through just seeing him there and leading the place. You know, I I mean, what's the money that they give you at the gate? I, I send it to him, but what is that going to do? So... I just feel sorry for my brother. Mm-hmm. Is he uh, serving a life sentence right now? He's uh, He's got a life without. Mm. Yeah, man. That's very hard. And I, I, I hear you, especially growing up with somebody and then, and then having to lose them to the system like that, you know, and, and feeling responsible. Oh, man. I'm sure your brother doesn't blame you for that. We all have our own paths. We do, you know. And it's something, like you said, uh, we really need to make the right choices when it comes down to it, all of us, you know, because it really just affects not only ourselves, but it affects everyone, everybody who loves you, cares about you, you know, I mean, we're missing you, you know, you know, that's, it's terrible. Um, What would you say to anyone that's out there right now watching you and, and just struggling, you know, in life period? I know you, you you gave some good examples on what they need to do, but um, what if they just feel like their back is against the wall? I mean, what would you tell them and what would you offer them to make better decisions uh, with their situations today? Depending on this situation, this, you know, it, it, uh, it plays a big role. You know, if you, you ain't got nothing going for you, uh, it's harder. I mean, what words can you express when your back is against the wall? Mm-hmm. This is a life you, you're used to. And to get out of that life or to come away from it, it takes time. And for somebody that's going through there, you know, I like to say, just hang in there. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's tomorrow. Tomorrow will bring different things. And, and uh, it'll help you look at look at the, you know, the life a little different. But if you cut yourself short, you know, if you take it all away, not giving tomorrow a chance, uh, tomorrow might be better than today. Your back is against the wall today. Mm -hmm. Maybe tomorrow can help you come off of that wall a little bit. Yeah. And give you, you buy you more time. Because uh, if you allow what you're used to, to take, you know, to take over. I mean, your decision at that point is too late. Uh, but buy yourself some time. Give yourself another day. Just say tomorrow will be better than today. Mm. Uh, let me give this time and trying to figure out what can I do to get out of this? You know, as much as time you need, take it. Because later on, when you come off of that wall, you ain't got nobody to thank but yourself for giving you that time. If you if you one of those that's you know that want to rush into solving that problem, and, you, and the time is wrong, it's gonna go wrong. Mm-hmm. Give yourself some time. You know, let tomorrow come. Right. Let right. tomorrow come, because it'll change things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. That's really good. Um, no, no emotional decisions at the moment. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, no, because it, it usually goes wrong. Now, that's just for the people that, you know, that's 
had nothing going for them. They, you know, no family member, no help. Uh, give yourself some time, you know. You're going to run into somebody who has the right answer that's going to help you. Right, right. And, and give God a chance. Mm -hmm. um, he will find a way out for you, you know, just like he sent his son as an escape goat. Hey, we look for, we'll try anything at that point. Now, for the people that has family, that has a chance, come on, Bruce. Come on. If it's just benefiting you, mm -hmm. you know, then I say you deserve it. But you got to look at your family. You got to look at what you have. You can't guarantee to get another one. Mm. You know, you got to hold on to the things that you have now, like, it's going to be gone tomorrow. You got to cherish those things. Your kids, your wife, whatever you're going through, you got to cherish those things because, you know, it's not like the store. You can just walk in the store and buy another one. No, this is stuff. Once it's gone, it's gone. Wow.